Hi everyone, this is Johnny O Knows. I'm playing Project Zomboid version 34.28. Had a comment um, on one of my posts or one of my uh, videos come up asking for a full analysis of all the traits and all the professions you can possibly uh, pick when you're creating a new character. Now, I am not the most scientific <laughs> with this. Um, I do like cra I make creating really crazy characters that have like really obvious flaws. If you've been watching my Let's Plays, you can you can see the type of characters I like to build. Um, so uh, I'm going to go through them all, and uh, hopefully uh, the information will help some of you guys out to um, pick a character that uh, fits your needs. All right, Stephen White is going to be our guy to uh, make a uh, character with. Let's go over the occupations first. So unemployed gives you eight spare points to uh, spend on anything else. And this this may sound really great at first, but um, really what what skills give you are those skill modifiers. Like you need to you need to try to get as many of these skill modifiers as you can. And the professions um, some of them give you quite a few. Like police officer is really great. Um, Park ranger is um, is the uh, profession that I your occupation I used for my nutritionalist character who's like 11 he's like past a year and doesn't look like he's ever going to stop uh, construction worker gives you two blunt accuracy 125 percent is great it, it really depends on if you're playing multiplayer or single player and I can really only speak to single player but when I create a single player character I tend to go for the crappy early game and amazing late game <laughs> that's how I build mine because I, I play the game to last as long as I can looting as much as I can um, and uh, sometimes I'll come up with some generic characters like uh, the burglar is pretty interesting. You get 100% with all three of the sneaking skills. So I'm just going to go through each one and uh, give you some insight into that. So you may not see anything added here except for sprinting, but what it is giving you is it's giving you another point in fitness and strength. Now, I may be wrong on this, but if you get a point in something, you tend to get a modifier along with it. Uh, with my uh, herbalist, uh, you know, the outdoors guy that I created for the the, uh, you know, the nutrition testing, he has a modifier of a plus 125 on both fitness and strength, and he was a park ranger. So it's not showing a modifier on these two, but I would imagine if you did pick this occupation, and because you're getting a point, you're probably getting some sort of modifier of fitness and strength as well. This is a really solid start. You get some sprinting. Uh, it's only costing you eight points, so it's one of the cheaper, one of the cheaper occupations. So if you just want a solid guy that is gonna build up strength and build up, um, you know, fitness really quickly, then this may be the character for you. Now, police officer. This is the one that I've picked for my uh, let's play because. Um, Firearms seems to be pretty tough to raise now. Like um, I, I didn't have any modifiers, and I must have gone through about 20 boxes of uh, shotgun ammo and about 25 boxes of uh, 9mm, and I only really got up to like I was just under three aiming. So it seems like you require a ton of ammo to raise those skills. So if you're looking to use uh, firearms in the late game, uh, then this is definitely a good occupation to pick up. You don't get any uh, fitness or strength. Uh, I noticed that I didn't get any strength modifiers, but I did get a fitness modifier um, as pick when I picked police officer. Park ranger is really solid uh, if you want to try to live off the land. Uh, the foraging 100% and trapping 100%. Uh, both of those skills are really easy to to uh, skill skill up when you've got those modifiers attached to them. Especially foraging, given the fact there is no book for foraging. Construction worker, uh, blunt accuracy is really solid, and carpentry. Uh, carpentry is really easy to raise even if you don't have a modifier, so uh, I really wouldn't suggest construction worker all that much. Back in the day, they used to get thick skinned along with it, and that's what made construction worker like, uh, you gotta pick that one. Security guard, I'm not really sure exactly what Night Owl does. I think it fixes, like, it changes the gamma for you. It just removes a little bit of the, the shadow at night. Doesn't seem all that strong. I know there's a lot of forum posts on the Indie Stones forum talking about the fact that it doesn't do anything. So uh, I've never picked it, but I've seen some pictures of the before and after. Like if you have Night Owl versus if you do have Night Owl, and 
it doesn't look all that much different. Um, even with even if your character is completely exhausted and uh, you're just stumbling through the forest at night, you still have an ability to see. So it's not like it's pitch black like some of these games like uh, uh, like Worm Online is really really dark when it when it when it hits nighttime. Uh, what's another game? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there are a couple games out there that it's just super pitch black. Uh, Project Zomboid is not like that. Uh, but light footed and sprinting, these are pretty good. But you are spending about ten points total to pick up security guards. So uh, this one doesn't feel doesn't feel like it's worth the points that you're getting. And carpenter, um, I'll stick with my guns with the uh, the carpentry thing. Carpentry is really easy to skill up. Uh, really, all you have to do is uh, chop down trees and saw them into planks. <laughs> and it has books too. So uh, Spending uh, so it looks like it's pretty cheap too. So it's only six points. I'm I'm just subtracting off of what you would get with unemployed. But um, but yeah, that doesn't doesn't feel like this would be a good uh, a good pick. I, I wouldn't pick it. Now burglar is a uh, very interesting very interesting given the fact that a lot of these three uh, skills tend to go up as you just play the game. Uh, it's very much like fitness and strength where they're almost passive abilities. And to have all of these at 100%, uh, you'll get XP really early in the game super fast just by holding down right click and not fighting zombies, just by you know walking past them or sneaking past them. So this would be a great build, I think, for, um, for multiplayer. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, firearms and stuff used in multiplayer, but if you just wanted to jump in and just you know see what people are making and be able to move around the map, I think this would be a good build. Good occupation to start with. Uh, so chef, uh, blade accuracy and blade maintenance is, is definitely nice. Uh, but you are spending uh, like 12 points to pick this one up. Uh, but the cooking one, it, cooking's very easy to, to skill up, especially once you start farming. So uh, I, I wouldn't pick this one in the long run. It'd be kind of cool to play a, a cook, like in a multiplayer game where you're the designated cook slash farmer guy and you just pick up a gardener along with it. Um, yeah, this would be kind of a cool one to role play, but I don't feel like it'd be good for like single player where you're the only person. Repairman, blade maintenance, and uh, and blood maintenance. Uh, once again, it, it adds uh, carpentry on there, and it's a very hefty occupation to pick. So uh, I definitely wouldn't pick this one, especially because of the fact that you can uh, get handy. Let's see what handy does for you. Yeah, you're basically getting plus one to blade maintenance and plus one. So you're let's let's get rid of this. Let's just see. If so you're already getting 75% for both of these um, with handy along with carpentry, and that's only eight points. And this one was what 12? Um, I don't know. Feels like handy is the better pick than um, if you're to rather than pick repairman. Now farmer, um, yeah, I wouldn't pick this at all. Um, farming plus three. I mean, this is another role play build if you wanted to be a farmer for a group that's in multiplayer and you wanted to jump into it real nice and fast. Um, farming is one of those ones that are really easy to skill up given the skill books, and um, yeah, I would pick that. Uh, fisherman, uh, foraging and fishing. I mean, if you wanted to play a character that only scavenged off the land, this would be a great pick. Make sure to uh, start in Knox County, though, because if we don't, there's no water <laughs> in the south. Doctor, uh, this is another one of those that I think would be really great for uh, multiplayer, especially if you're doing a lot of PvP and a lot of uh, you know, a lot of player versus player, where you want to get up to speed real fast and uh, pick a doctor and be able to help out people that get shot. Um, then yeah, this would be great. But for a, a single player, I, I wouldn't pick it. Now, veteran is one of the it's it's the it's 16 points, so eight minus eight minus eight, so 16 points to pick veteran, and veteran uh, is pretty amazing. Though, if you look at the aiming and reloading, you only get 100 percent. Where with police officer, you get 125 percent and 100 percent. So, what you're really buying here with veteran is desensitized where you don't get panicked at all. You never have to take beta blockers. You're you're going to be hitting at full capacity all the time regardless how many zombies you have on you. Now, I feel like this is a really cool build for multiplayer, but for a long-term single player build, um, 
you eventually get desensitized as time goes on. So the more zombies you kill, the more zombies it takes for you to um, to get panicked. So my character that's been alive for a year now, it takes a lot of zombies for him to hit max max uh, panic. Nurse, uh, let's see, first aid and light footed. This I could see being used for a single player game, but um, it's be really great for co op. If uh, you got folks that you're playing with in co-op, now lumberjack. So the axe man. So the axe is probably the best melee weapon in the game. If you can use it faster, <laughs> and uh, you can take down trees faster. Not to mention you start off with 100% blade accuracy. If you combine that with um, which one is it? Brawler. Yeah. With brawler, now you get 125%. You'll be you'll be max with uh, blade accuracy pretty quick, especially when you start at three. I mean, gosh, if you start at three, then that early game is gonna be really easy for you. Though it doesn't really give you all that much else other than another point of strength, which also might mean modifier and strength. So this could be a good occupation to start if you want to start with someone that's uh, feeble or unfit or I guess weak. And then there's the other one. Where's the yeah feeble is the next one down. So that way you start with a huge modifier, um, and if you pick feeble or or weak, then you're not you're not starting at zero. You would start at like a, I can't really count the pips here, but it looks like six. So you'd start at least one, and you'd have a huge modifier to go with it, so you can build it up really fast. This would be a nice one to pick, uh, at least in my opinion, for um, uh, you know long term uh, single player game. Especially given the fact that you're only spending eight points to get it. The fitness instructor looked pretty interesting. You know, high fitness, good sprinting. Yeah, uh, picking a fitness instructor along with some of the other sneaking skills, I think, would be an interesting mix for a single player game. I'm starting to appreciate the sneaking aspect of the game now that uh, in my Let's Play, where I basically started off with zero strength and I can't kill anything. You know, using a, using a baseball bat feels like a wiffle bat. Uh, so I feel like this would be an interesting interesting occupation to pick, especially if you pick uh, the nutrition system. That way you know exactly, I mean, you're basically getting, nutritionist is four points, so you're really only spending ten points for the occupation plus the four with nutritionalist. It'd be nice if this was a little bit lower because it's, it's pretty high. It's, it's right there next to veteran. It's just two away. So 14 points, I think. Yes, 14. I can do math. Burger Flipper um, it goes along with the roleplay one. Uh, at least you can keep your uh, axe, you know, you keep your axe from dying off too fast. But uh, the um, what is it? Six points for uh, cooking. I, I don't know. Don't feel it. Now I don't know a lot about um, the electrical stuff, so I haven't spent that much time with it. I do plan to play around with it in my Let's Play, but um, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly which one to get. But I, I do feel that electrical is extremely difficult to, to raise because you're basically having to find a radio and dismantle it. Like you, you really can't build very much at uh, level zero until you get a couple levels then you can start building things and I'd imagine you get a lot of XP from there. There, is, there are no books for electrical as well so I, this would be huge if uh, you were in a multiplayer game and they want to use radios to communicate. I mean, not, obviously everyone would use Ventrilo or Mumble or something like that. But um, uh, there, are, there are ways of using walkie-talkies to attract zombies. So you can kind of control the flow of a horde by using sound. And engineer kind of the same thing. I, I would definitely, if you wanted to go electrical, I'd go electrician rather than engineer. Carpentry is just too easy to raise. Alright, so that's all the occupations. Um, I'll talk about the available traits as well. So Cat Eyes is kind of in the same vein as the uh, Night Owl. Um, you can see just fine. Like I, I see just fine even with, um, what is it, uh, Short Sighted at night. So I don't see Cat Eyes as being something you should get. Dexterous? Dexterous is amazing. And its antithesis, all thumbs, is the worst thing you could possibly get. So Dexterous allows you to pick up items really quickly, and I feel that um, 
I can't live without it. Like you're having the loot run so often that, and not to mention all the inventory management you have to do later in the game when you're moving stuff around. You're coming back with like you know 30, 30 pounds worth of stuff, and you got to start putting it in all the different containers. It really makes that whole inventory management game piece of this of this uh, Project Zomboid a lot more uh, bearable. Where all thumbs, it's it's so bad. Like I'm, I'm surprised it's plus two. It should be like plus ten. It is so bad. Uh, picking up anything takes forever. So fast reader and slow reader. Um, so fast reader, I'd pick if I guess you're playing in a multiplayer server where you can't pass time or you can't sleep. Um, that might be beneficial, but books take forever to read anyways. So I tend to go with slow reader. Outdoorsman, uh, this is one of the traits that I always pick nowadays because of the fact that I, I don't want to have to worry about the rain. Now, um, if you have Outdoorsman, you don't get sick from the rain, but you do get slowed down by the rain if, you, if you're out there too long. So this one, I feel, is, is for, for two points, boom, I'm all over it. So Wakeful and Sleepyhead, these are the antithesis uh, traits. Now, Wakeful allows you to not sleep as much. This is really good if you're um, you're looting a lot or you're multiplayer. If you're playing multiplayer and you're like the designated looter guy, uh, that way you, you don't get you know get completely destroyed if you're stuck up at, at night. But if you're playing single player, um, Sleepyhead doesn't force you to go to sleep earlier. It just allows you to sleep more. So it's kind of like a nice it's like a bonus four points for me because. I like being able to sleep the whole night. I don't like playing the game when it's dark out. I leave that for when I'm stupid enough to stay out at night and get caught. If you, as you'll see in my Let's Play, um, the I won't spoil it, but one of the characters that I play in my Let's Play, um, he gets stuck out at night and barely makes it home. So the ability to sleep for 12 hours after that uh, was really nice. So Iron Gut and uh, I think it's a weak stomach. Where is it? Here we go. Weak stomach. Yeah, so Iron Gut feels completely worthless to me unless you happen to be a guy that is out in the wilderness and you don't have the herbalist trait. Um, I'll talk more about the herbalist trait, but basically, if you have the herbalist trait, you know what berries are bad and what are not. Or if you're eating food that's bad right from the get go, I don't know what to tell you because it's it's not that hard to get food, especially with all the, the non-perishable food available in the early game, and um, and once you get farming going, you should have plenty of food for for yourself, you know, cycling. So Iron Gut is really for when you have to eat bad food, and I've never run into that situation. I either I either eat good food or I don't eat food. <laughs> That's I, yeah, I've never run into a situation where I needed Iron Gut. Weak stomach for me is an easy. Uh, like a simple plus three points. Like I never eat something that's bad, so I it's not something that I'd ever worry about. It's just an easy three points to put into something cool. Angler. Uh, so with all of these, like baseball player, uh, first aider, uh, gardener, every single one of these that gives you the plus one. Don't look. Don't look over it. Um, they're giving you modifiers. And uh, let's see. Let me go with uh, unemployed here. They're giving you modifiers along with that plus one to fishing. You may look at it and go, plus one fishing, what, what's the big fucking deal? The plus 75% modifier is huge. So don't look these over. If you if you want to fish and you want to gain fishing skill faster, just know, just remember though, you want to pick the ones that don't have a book along with it. If, it, if you can get a skill book, then you're, you're basically blowing through it faster than any modifier could ever help you with. But it does help to have both. If you really want to, like, I, I like carpentry, so I always tend to uh, pick up um, handy, which gives me at least 75% of my carpentry. So I bring that together with um, the skill books, and you can gain carpentry super fast. So, like I said, uh, the ones like light eater, I'm uh, not light eater, uh, baseball player, angler, first aider, gardener. And like, um, yeah, like Brawler, what is it, there's, um, yeah, basically anything that says it gives you points, it's also giving you modifiers. And modifiers, in my opinion, are super important if you're looking to play the late game. If you're there to win the early game, then, you know, you get your strength and you get your fitness and 
you can you can force your way through it. I don't know. It's 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 a hard juggle. Like you can either be really good in the beginning and survive better, or you can be you're eventually going to be super awesome regard, regardless. So it de depends on how long you want to take to get there. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll leave that up to debate. So brave. Uh, I think there's an there's an antithesis here for um, panicky. Or is what is it called? Cowardly. So this is how fast you get panicked. Um, because of the fact that you do get eventually, you don't get completely desensitized like the uh, the veteran does. But you do, you do have control over this. The longer you live, the less panicked you're going to get. I feel picking up the plus two from Cowardly is just free two points. Brave, four points is a lot for something that's eventually going to go away. First Aider, kind of the same thing we are talking about before. Gardener, same thing. Uh, graceful, makes less noise while moving. I, th I think there's something to be said about... Um, both, you know, you can go either way. Like, if you are a specific multiplayer and you're the looter of the group, then I think, you know, being able to get through all those zombies that are respawning, um, you're really, you really got some benefit to this. On the other hand, if, you know, you're playing single player or if you're playing multiplayer and you just want an extra two points and you tend to be a bruiser and you kill zombies anyways, then clumsy is a real, like, a, you know, easy two points for you. I tend to pick clumsy a lot. But um, now that I'm kind of playing the stealth game in my uh, in my let's play, I'm really appreciating how you know how easy it is to uh, sneak by things without having to kill them. And I feel like graceful is the better pick in the long run because of the fact that you are eventually going to run out of axes, you're eventually going to run out of uh, wood glue. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an up to debate one. Conspicuous, uh, likely to be spotted by zombies, uh, and I think uh, there's a there's a two uh, clumsy. Which one is it? It's it's conspicuous. There it is. Um, being seen by zombies, they don't have that good of a range, and from what I understand, as they decompose, or I think there's a proper word for it, but as the game goes along, they get weaker. I think their sight goes down as well. So plus four consp for conspicuous feels like a free four points for me. And I'm kind of one of those players that I'm okay with the zombies going after me because I like herding them into places that where I can control them. Not necessarily to kill them, but just to get them out of the way of my, my uh, loot areas. Okay, light eater and hearty eater. These ones are very debatable about, you know, it depends on kind of what you're going for. If you're, if you're a really heavy static player and uh, you've got... You know, you got your farms going, you got the cycles proper and all that stuff. Then I see Hardy Appetite as being a free four points for you. But if you happen to be a nomadic type of character who, you know, you're doing a lot of fighting, you're doing a lot of sneaking around, uh, Light Eater is really nice because that you tend to have that big old negative of being hungry with Hardy Appetite quite a bit. You can't really, um, you can't really afford to have less health or less health, less healing, and less. Um, it's not less health. It's less healing and less damage when you're hungry. So lucky and unlucky. Now, I always pick lucky because I tend to, you know, oh, I got an axe off a zombie. And I go, just because I got my lucky trait. That's the only reason. I don't know if these help or not. Um, I'll leave it up to you to figure out. But I always pick lucky just so I can feel better about myself when I pick up an axe off of a zombie. And in my let's play, um, my second let's play, um, I picked up a lot of axes already, and <laughs> yeah, it's up to debate. Uh, there's probably some analysis on the forums that go into exactly what the percentage is, but um, I'm not that type of guy. I, I like the lucky traits, so I pick it. So scientific, I know. Nutritionalist uh, allows you to, a nutritionist um, gives you the ability to see all the cal calories, so the caloric intake, uh, how much protein, fat, blah, blah, blah in each piece of food regardless of whether it's packaged or not so nutritionist is um is really for if you only have the nutrition system enabled on your game you can only do that by going through the sandbox and enabling it so for a regular game um yeah i wouldn't use it until the nutrition stuff gets put back in in whatever fashion they feel is need needed okay resilience and less prone to disease, and then there's one called, uh, I don't know, where is it, I think it's like plus six or plus eight. 
It's like, uh, <laughs> sorry, I can't find it. Probably right on top of it. Sorry, folks. Prone to illness. Sorry, there it is. Prone to illness. Um, so if I'm going to be zombified, I don't mind it being faster. <laughs> I'd rather it be super fast, like so that you don't feel like, oh no, I got scratched. Am I going to become a zombie? And if it, if I sleep and I'm anxious, I'm like, okay, good, I'm I'm dead. I'd rather die faster. And um, the only weakness that you get for picking prone to illness is that you tend to get, you know, regular infections. I'm not talking about the zombification infection. I'm talking about like you got scratched. You're not getting zombified, but you are getting you are getting infected by the cut by your by your blood your your skin being exposed. So uh, prone to illness can be pretty dangerous if you're jumping through a lot of windows. Um, uh, you take a fall. Oh no, not take a fall. Anything that you know, exposes you to um, uh, infection. Uh, resilient. Um, I do think it has um, some resistance to zombification, but I, I don't know the numbers on that. You're better off looking at the forums on that. So runner and gymnast are very much like your plus ones. I actually picked these two in my let's run, uh, my let's my let's run, my let's my let's gymnast, my let's play, and I'm finding these to be really great in the early game because I'm already up to like level three in both uh, light footed and nimble. I haven't been sprinting all that much, but I would imagine that the bonus you get for sprinting it really helps. It's really going to help for when I'm um, going to have to do some long distance running. Like going to Knox County, or you know, bringing gear from your outposts to your like your main safe house. Um, it's it's always a drag to have to like be carrying a ton of stuff really slowly, not being able to sprint um, <laughs> really far distances. But um, these two really, um, I really appreciate them a lot more now. Brawler, uh, I love Brawler. <laughs> I love getting tons of XP for killing zombies because that's what I like to do. I like killing zombies. So if you like killing zombies and you end up killing a lot of zombies, you can get a ton of early XP for getting Brawler. Eagle-eyed, um, I think the antithesis of this, is there a minus six? I don't think there is. There used to be, I think there used to be a blind. I don't see it here anymore. Now, I think there's just the um, the short-sighted, which is only plus two. Um, sight in this game doesn't feel as important as hearing. Now, hearing is super important. I used to be hard, I used to pick hard of hearing all the time. And I'd be like, man, I didn't see that guy coming. I'm like, well, yeah, it's behind you. And now that I, I make sure that I don't pick hard of hearing, um, you do get a little bit of an influence. Uh, if you look at your cone... Of, of sight, you do kind of get a little bubble behind you. So you do have an opportunity of perceiving a zombie there without actually seeing it. Like, it will appear as if you're looking at it and give you just enough time to react. So when I pick hearing, I, I pick hearing over uh, vision any day. So eagle eye seems like a waste of six points. All right, fast healer and slow healer. If you're going to get hurt, it's going to take a while. It's just kind of the whole thing with the slow reader versus fast reader thing. Uh, where's slow reader? So, sorry, slow healer. There it is. It's, my, it's a plus six. This is very much like the, the reading one. If you're going to get hurt, you're going to break your leg. It's going to take a long time to heal anyways. Uh, what does it do? Shave off a couple days if you break your leg? or I, I don't know the, the math behind it, but healing from a, a pretty serious wound, such as you know falling out of a two-story building or jumping out of a two-story building, it's going to take a long time anyways, so I don't care if it takes a little bit longer. Six points is six points. That, that can go right to Brawler. That could be my comparison with Brawler. Okay, fast learner versus slow learner. Uh, so this one, this one is hard to pick because um, you know if you've got a lot of modifiers, uh, slow learner shouldn't be too bad. Like it, I think it reduces your learning modifier by about twenty percent. But if you don't have a lot of modifiers, if you're just going pure fitness and you've got the heavy hitter pluses on here, um, then slow learner is going to basically drop all of your skills that don't have a modifier to it to 5% or 10% and all those skills will take a very long time to gain.
if you're in it for like you want to play for five years or something like that and you're, you're completely dedicated then this plus six points will be really good for you but the fact of the matter is if you don't have a lot of modifiers and you know you're going full bore with these big big guns here uh, fast learner can really help you because it, it bumps that tw that minimum of 20 percent 25 percent up to like 45 to 50 I don't know the exact number I think it's 20 percent or 25 I don't know but but yeah I I, I tend to pick fast learner a lot because um, I just like to gain skill really quickly uh, and then you have the uh, the strong and fit ones uh, this is the first one it gives you plus two fitness and then uh, so it's fit where is the other one sorry so fit is the fitness one obviously and then there's stout somewhere yeah stouts here that's the strength one that's the first increase that you can get on both fitness and strength and then there's the other one which is athletic and strong which give you plus four so you start with nine athletic uh, fitness and or nine strength depending if you pick these and the other the other way goes for um, the antithesis as well. So if you get unfit, you start at one fitness. The funniest thing is, if you pick weak, you start at zero strength, <laughs> zero. Um, that's a lot of points. Ten points, twenty points for picking both of these. Amazing. Uh, there's also what is it? Out of shape, which is the negative fitness one, and then uh, feeble is the negative strength one. So. I'm testing out specifically in my let's play uh, picking weak and uh, weak and unfit just so I can see how long it takes me to get those two passive abilities back up to five and and eventually back up to ten. Um, I feel having these points really helps you you know load up on modifiers. And sure, your character is completely dog shit in the beginning. <laughs> Just watch my watch my uh, let's play. You'll see why. Uh, but the modifiers you've got, you got like modifiers everywhere if you do it right. So um, I'm I'm kind of in the camp of going weak in the beginning and slowly building it up. I know the amount of experience points for getting to ten or getting to five are ridiculous, but still, if you're gonna play a long time, might as well. You know, build it up and be be really cool in the beginning, and then get your skills up really quickly. You know, in the mid game, and then the rest of the game is all about you just you know building up your strength and fitness. So yeah, that's my thoughts on that one. Alrighty, uh, then we've got so where are we now? We were at so we we're at fit, and then uh, former scout, same thing. If you want first aid and foraging. Don't like it because of first aid. Uh, herbalist. Herbalist is really good if you happen to be going on the outdoors so you know which berries you can eat and which can't. Hiker. Now, Hiker, I think this gave me uh, modifiers both fitness and strength. I wish I wish it would show it. The fact that it doesn't, it's kind of hard to tell if um, this is worth taking or not. But my character needed foraging and it needed trapping and uh, it fit the bill. Like I was able to max out trapping really easily, and foraging was simple. Also, hiking hiker is very strong. Now, keen hearing. So I know I talk about how um, hearing is important, but if it's too strong, you don't know how close that zombie is. You're like, oh, this is a zombie. I, I would it would completely drive my anal ass completely insane. I'd hear one, and I'd be like, oh my god, where is it? It could be really far away based off of your keen hearing. So keen hearing um, seems like a waste of six points for me, but it doesn't mean that hard of hearing is an easy two points. Hard of hearing, if you pick this, you're losing that little gap of perception right behind you, which is huge. Now, if you're spinning around like a maniac all the time and you're good, then go get those two points. But for me, uh, especially now that I'm doing these Let's Plays, I'm sitting here talking while I'm trying not to die, and um, yeah, it really it saved my ass quite a few times already. I think the only time I died in my Let's Play was because I was an idiot. <laughs> All right, so low thirst and um, and high thirst. High thirst is the easiest six points in this list. Um, if you have a water bottle with you 
and you know you're, you're going to have water for a very long time. I, I know the water turns off, but there's still water stored in each of the sinks, the toilets, the bathtubs. You can pick like I think it's like three units of water from each one, even after the water's turned off. So even if like you don't have your carpentry up to a certain point, water's still going to be pretty ab abundant for a long time. If you if you live that long, it, it'll be there for a long time. Um, so uh, high thirst is like a simple six points. Low thirst, I, I, don't, I don't even know why you do that. Spend six points for that. So organized versus disorganized. Now this depends on what kind of character you've got. If um, you've got, you know, you're starting off strong. Um, uh, if you, you, you're putting a lot of points into the big, big hitters in the green side, uh, then organized may seem, may seem not worth it. This is, I mean, this is kind of like, um, like all thumbs and dexterous. Disorganized for someone that's weak is amazing because your bags are also unorganized. I think I can hold like 28, 28, uh, I, I think it's 28, yeah. So 28 pounds of gear in a large hiking bag with organized. With disorganized, I think it's only like 10. So disorganized seems like it's like way too harsh. And organized, well, it's six points, feels pretty balanced, and it really helps those that may not have a lot of strength to begin with. With my character at zero strength, having 28 spot, 28 pounds worth of baggage was great. But if I started off strong, and I guess you get like up to 16, 17, I think it's 20, I, don't, I can't remember. But if you can carry a lot on your own, you don't need organized. But if you want to completely gimp yourself, pick this organized. It's the... The plus four is, it should be like plus eight. Once again, it's that inventory stuff. All right, so self-defense class. Uh, this one's a really good one because you get guard, and guard is one of those harder to increase skills. So I tend to pick guard if I'm going to be fighting a lot of zombies, which I always am. We already talked about st stout. Now thick skin versus weak skin. This one is our thin skin. This is a pretty debatable skill here. If you happen to be, you know, you're like A++, you, you're never going to get bitten. You're super careful, and you, you, you take things super slow, then thin skin is a great skill to pick for, because of the plus six. Now, I, I say that unless, because of the fact if you really are that good, and you're never, ever going to get hit, um, then kudos to you. Get your plus six points. Me, I, I'm so, I'm so like my head in the stars half the time. I'm like, I'm gonna build this thing over here. Or I'm gonna go do this thing over here. I need thick skin to stay alive. Uh, basically, what it does, it allows you to, um, it lowers the percentage of a chance that um, a scratch or, I don't know, a bite. I don't know. Um, it lowers the chance that it'll break the skin. Because if it breaks the skin, then you go through the whole rolling of. Um, of uh, whether or not you got zombified. So uh, I would really look at this on the forums. Uh, there's some folks that have done some really extensive testing on it. Um, take them for take their word for 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 writ rather than mine. This thick skin. The only way I've said that it's good is because oh I got hit. I'm slightly damaged, but I am not bleeding, and that's it. <laughs> that's that's what you get from me. So adrenaline junkie. This seems like a really fun one, but at minus six or minus eight, uh, it's pretty hefty price. Uh, this I think would be kind of good if you went with a weak character or um, a unfit character because you're gonna be panicked all the time anyways. Uh, if you move faster, that's great. But to tell you the truth, without it, you can still move faster than a fast shambler. But I think it'd be really cool if you were playing sandbox and you up the difficulty by a ton. This would be a great lifesaver there. Now handy, um, handy is one of I feel like it's the the if I had to pick one of these modifiers plus you know plus two blah blah blah, I would say that this one is essential because of the blade and blunt maintenance. Um, blade and blunt ma maintenance is so important near the end of the game that you're really starting to run out of resources uh, as if you're playing a static character, but being able to like keep an axe for two weeks rather than a week is is huge especially if you're not finding that many axes or it's, it's hard for you to find weapons couple that with carpentry um, I, I do say that carpentry is uh, easy to, to 
to skill up, but the fact that it's combined with both blade maintenance and blunt maintenance, I, I, there's, there's nothing wrong with this. I always pick it, no matter what. I think handy is extremely important. Hunter, um, Hunter's kind of cool because you get um, some shooting skill along with um, a self-sustaining skill. I think this one's pretty good too, and at eight points it makes sense. And then athletic and strong. So let's see if there are any that we missed on the negative side. So clumsy, cowardly, hard of hearing. Hypochondriac's kind of weird. Um, you can kind of get sick without really being sick. This would drive me completely insane. That if I'm just getting anxious for no reason and I'm not feeling well for no reason, that would that would drive me insane. So I tend not to pick that one. But if you don't mind feeling sick and you can just ignore it, uh, then all for it. Hemophobic. Um, this is an, this is a free three points to me. I, I've never seen this being a problem. Oh no, I panic. Big deal. And I play single player, so I never have to do first aid on others. This will probably be more useful for Mother's NPCs, but but for now, yeah. So agoraphobic and claustrophobic. Uh, for some people, uh, these two are an easy eight points. For me, I can't stand that heartbeat, and I don't I don't like turning it off. I th I think it adds to the tension of the game, and I feel like it, the immersion of it would uh, would be detracted if I just turned off the heartbeat. But for some people, just like turn you know getting free eight points, and then riding out you know how long it takes for them to eventually get a little bit desensitized. But I, I would I would go nuts if I saw that face that, that panic face on the top right at all times. I talked about conspicuous being okay, disorganized being completely shitty. Uh, so pacifist, um, from what I read, pacifist only lowers the amount of XP you get for weapons. So if you got some good modifiers already, then um, then pacifist might be an easy four points. But that was based off of a forum post I read, so I would read more on pacifist. But it's looking kind of like one of those one of those perks that you could take to get a free point, free four points. Prone illness we talked about. Sleepyhead is really good. Unlucky no, because just because. Uh, asthmatic. Um, this one seems dangerous. Like <laughs> getting exerted is is probably one of the most dangerous things in the game. And you're sitting there fighting zombies. All of a sudden, you're hitting like you're using a wet noodle. You don't want that to happen. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't pick this one, but uh, yeah I don't know the applications of you know, someone that's really good. Maybe maybe someone that uh, uses stealth a lot could use this as an extra five points. But if you're doing any type of combat, or actually no, and I, I I changed that. If it's if you're using stealth and firearms a lot, this may be a good five points. But if you're probably having to sprint. Yeah, it's debatable. Is it worth five points? I don't know. All right, um, overweight and obese. Uh, now, and there's underweight as well. So there's like underweight and severely underweight or very underweight. Uh, these are. Um, I didn't feel like they hurt me very much when I did the uh, nutrition testing that I did. Like obese, you definitely felt a lot slower and you hit a lot weaker. Uh, but the whole thing about uh, you know prone to injury, like I, I didn't really run into that at all. So I tend I tend to get overweight when I want to um, you know get some free points. Like I think I'm overweight on my uh, let's play character. But but if you have nutrition set in, obese is awesome. It's free ten points. Just don't eat for two months. Like eat some chips. <laughs> Just don't get the starvation mood lit. Then you'll eventually be seventy five pounds and not have obese anymore. So there you go. All right, restless sleep. A restless sleeper is terrible. Um, this one is the one that forces you to sleep more. So if you happen to be out at night, you're, you're screwed because you're going to be super tired. Um, I tried using this one along with Sleepyhead, and it was way too much. Like I was constantly tired. This one was terrible. Uh, illiterate? I don't even know. <laughs> If you're really in it for the long game, like you don't use any skill books whatsoever, then this one's for you. But if you need those skill books, which I do, because I love all those free points that, and not free points, but those fast points it gives you in the beginning of the game, then uh, yeah. But illiterate, oh, that one's for the true pros. 
and deaf, I have no idea. That that would be awesome. But deaf, um, if you can do it, go for it. All right, so that's um, the analysis I can give on all the occupations and available traits. Um, I can show you the Let's Play character that I've got. It's I call it the uh, Big Min Max. So I'm starting with unfit and weak. So I start with absolutely no strength. I start with one fitness. I go with high thirst, overweight, slow he healer, conspicuous, prone to illness, sleepy head, hemophobic, weak stomach, clumsy, cowardly, short-sighted, slow reader, and then um, a lot of these can be mixed around. Like this, I feel gives you a good amount of points. Like I'm really overdoing it with overweight. I'm um, probably do without overweight, but this will give you a ton of points to be able to spend on anything. If you're capable enough to get through the first couple months when you, you're you really weak and you can't fight very long. So really, if, if you're skilled at the game, then you're probably already doing this. If you're not, I, I really wouldn't recommend it. So I go, went with Dexterous, Outdoorsman, Light Eater, Lucky, Running, Gymnast. I'm really appreciating these now that I have them. Uh, brawler, fast learner, organized, self-defense, thick-skinned, and handy. And as you can see, I've got a ton of different modifiers. I did pick a police officer as my occupation because I, I didn't like uh, the fact that firearms took so long to, to train up. So I wanted that plus 125 to aiming and uh, plus 100% to reload. But uh, this is going to be kind of like your, uh, a character that will be more of a looter than a guy that's out in the outdoors taking care of things because I, I don't have trap, I don't have foraging, I don't have herbalist, so I don't know what berries are good to eat. So foraging is kind of useless to me, except for maybe getting twigs uh, for fires. But other than that, um, he's really locked into the cities. Uh, let me see if I can find the one that I have for my nutritionalist. Will this work? I think it was, yeah. So this is the one that I picked for my nutritionalist. You can see that I went with um, obesis here. I, I didn't go full bore weak, but I did start weak, and I was able to build up to level 6 of both uh, fitness and strength relatively easily. I didn't have a problem with it. So feeble and um, out of shape really gave me a free 12 points. Uh, obese was definitely a free 10 points. And couple that with a light eater. Uh, man, it was, it was so easy to lose obese really quickly. Uh, let's see what else. What else is not very self-explanatory? Um, I did go herbalist, and I did go, um, and then with park ranger, it gave me more ability to grow my own food out in the wilderness. So uh, trapping and foraging, those two went up super fast. And um, for a time there, r really all I had to do was forage to keep myself fed. By the time I got enough skill points in trapping, and then you know built up my gigantic um, safe house in the, in the wilderness, and you know, good for years if I want to play it. But yeah, that's that's my analysis. Please don't take it for for writ. I, I'm not the most scientific Project Zomboid player. I like the logistics more than I like you know the numbers and whatnot. I know there's a lot of people that go into the game files to find out what's what, but that's kind of your every man's diagnosis of um, all these stats. I've been playing the game for a very long time, but all these, all these traits uh, have been, like, there used to be, like, this one cookie-cutter build that you pick uh, in early uh, Project Zomboid, and I think, was it eight months ago, maybe a year ago, that they added all these cool occupations as well as the traits. So everyone's relatively new at these. And, and once again, I'll reiterate, look on the Indie, Indie Stone forums. There's lots of guys that looked at the game files, they know the code. They'll, they'll tell you the statistical analysis of, you know, lucky is a complete waste of points or something like that. Uh, I still take it. Uh, so it's all up to you. Um, you, can, you can listen to what I say, but really, like I said, don't take it as the gospel. Um, hopefully it gives you some ideas of what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. All right, so this is Johnny Onos playing Project Zomboid version 3428. 30, <laughs> That's it. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I uh, hope to uh, hear from you soon through either comments or um, you can subscribe. So thank you so much.